Welcome to CivilNet. Today I'm joined by someone who needs little introduction, System of a Down, Serge Tankian. Serge, thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure, thank you. So to start off, shortly after the Second Karabakh War, System released two songs, which it hadn't done so in a long time, Genocidal Humanoids and Protect the Land. This is an, this is an excerpt from Protect the Land. Some were forced to foreign lands, some, were, some would lay dead on the sand. Would you stay and take command? Would you stay with gun in hand? Obviously, as an Armenian, I see the references, but I was surprised by how many non-Armenians and system fans uh, learnt about the 2020 war through these two songs. And it can be said that in our worst moments, these songs really galvanized us. So what was your intent with these two songs? Um, mostly it was to break through the disinformation campaign launched by Azerbaijan during the war. We saw how their social media bots were obliterating other artists trying to stand in solidarity with Armenians and with peace. Um, and so we wanted to get the truth out about what was going on. And we hadn't put out music in 15, 16 years. So it became a real kind of uh, thing for us to a motivation for us to want to want to tell the truth uh, about what was going on. And so we got together and released those songs quite quickly and uh, spoke about the need for you know, to to break through that disinformation. We, we all noticed, along with, I'm sure you did, the kind of false parody that was in the press at the time, especially the first two weeks of the war, uh, due to the Turkish Azeri disinformation campaign and social media kind of onslaught. So we're trying to fight that physically and also obviously raise funds uh, for humanitarian aid in Artsakh and Armenia. And um, of course, President Biden officially recognized the Armenian genocide and it was a long journey to this moment. And, and you expressed your gratitude online. Uh, also in the documentary Screamers, you spoke to US politicians and encouraging them to recognize the genocide. And you even visited your grandfather to speak about the memories and to speak about the genocide. So what's next for you in the direction of Armenian genocide recognition? Well, what's next for me should be what's next for our nation in terms of genocide recognition. Um, we, you know, personally, I'm focused on getting, trying to get the UK, Australia, New Zealand, other countries that should be recognizing the genocide to do so. I've got New Zealand residency. I live there part of the year. And so, you know, we uh, working on that um, with Armenian diasporan uh, political organizations, uh, lobby groups, etc. And but it's also it's, it's just all about putting pressure on Turkey to do the right thing ultimately themselves. Um, it's going to I, I find it hard to see that under Erdogan. But, you know, there will be a day where Turkey has to recognize the genocide and, and uh, apologize and make amends, reparations, whatever is necessary uh, for there to be justice for the descendants of, you know, the uh, those that suffered under the genocide. And I'm always um cognizant to mention not just Armenians, but also Greeks and Assyrians who suffered. Mm -hmm. And um, not to put a finer point on it, but you're an activist and you were here even before the revolution and um, you were using your celebrity status to push the previous president, Serge Sarkisyan, towards reforms. And you were here in the early days of the revolution as well. So how can you use your activism now that Armenia is in a state of military defeat, economic hardship and political crisis? I think now is the time that, you know, I've been thinking about this, I'm sure, just like everyone else, of what what do we do now with this situation? Um, I think it is very important for us to uh, have this type of unity we did that we had during the war. Uh, you know, the, the type of standing up together, the solidarity, the uh, galvanization and, and the investment into our, our nation. Um, that feeling that we had as one we need to have that now we shouldn't be a type of people that dropped a ball because of a loss okay uh we have to look at other nations that have suffered uh these types of you know uh, military defeats including japan germany israel after you know 1967 war and what they did what they learned from it how they bounced back and we have to build, you know, Eric Hagopian, who you've interviewed many times, has says the same thing. We have to put our heads down. We have to build, whether it's our military infrastructure, whether it's our educational system, whether it's our economy, which is e extremely important for that building process. Um, so we have to work hard. We have to 
stand up together again and harder than even before, stronger than even before, you know, I'm referring to during the war. And we have to build, we have to build and we have to do it quickly. We have to unify and we have to build. Those are the two things we need to do. And it's been three years since the 2018 Armenian Revolution. Um, how do you see the legacy of the revolution now, three years on? It's really hard to gauge it based on what happened because of the war um, in terms of the you know current perspective. Uh, the revolution, I would say, when, I, when I've been talking to different press and I've been doing a lot of press, I basically say, look, 2018 Velvet Revolution was a high point in modern Armenian history because through a nonviolent change, we were able to change to a more progressive government. You can criticize whatever you want out of you know the government or whatever, but we know what change that was and we know the majority of the Armenian nation was behind it, not just myself. Um, but obviously, two and a half years later, uh, because of Azerbaijan, uh, Turkey, Syrian mercenaries, their aggressiveness, that peaceful revolution that the country embraced, uh, created, not created, but uh, two and a half years later, we experienced this horrible war that we, we were having to defend. And it created this horrific uh, grieving uh, because of the loss of so many young, young soldiers and, and, you know, young people's lives. It created a grieving based on the turning over of indigenous lands that Armenians have been living on for 2,500 years. It is a huge grieving period. We are at a loss in, in many ways, but we're in a shock as well. We're grieving and we're in shock, but it's time to really galvanize. It's time to say, okay, this happened. I can point fingers this way. They can point fingers that way, whatever. The important thing is what do we do next? How do we survive the next phase, you know? And there's Russian peacekeepers through there with a mandate, you know, and that mandate might end. It might not. We don't know. We have to be ready. And whether it's militarily, whether it's uh, technologically, whether it's uh, economically looking after our own people, we have to be ready. And the only way to do that is to unify. The only way to do that is to unify. Use everyone's best efforts. Mortal enemies should should work together. I mean, that's that's the only way. Um, we're a small nation with small resources. If we don't work together, you know, there is no other option. And you, you really are one of the most prominent activists in the Armenian community, and you help many gain exposure, including us at CivilNet, and we are thankful for that. Um, so I'm interested, what are your plans for the future, not just in terms of activism, but also in terms of system and music as well? Uh, the activism continues, you know, I mean, you, you know, when you're speaking truth to power, there's, you know, there, uh, there's there's always something to say on a daily basis. There's always injustice occurring everywhere, not just having to do with Armenia, but but everywhere around the world. Obviously, uh, we're living in kind of uh, very difficult times in terms of our um, there. There's a real. A threat to our ex extinction as a, as beings uh, based on climate change. You know, there's there's many things to tackle as an activist. But getting to music, your real question. Um, <clears throat> during COVID, I had a lot of time to finish a lot of music that that I had been starting to work on. So I have a lot of releases. I have two soundtracks to release, um, two um, live records, um, a poetry record with cinematic music, two cinematic records and a second EP and this is right after we just released Elasticity, the rock EP and Truth to Power, the uh, film about my activism and System of a Down and music. As far as System of a Down, we haven't made any plans. We have a few shows at the end of this year that were delayed from last year in Los Angeles. Our European tour got canceled again this year, but um, as soon as we figure it out, we'll, you know, disseminate the information. And uh, from Gyumri to Gavar, um, some people I know have been telling me to ask this question, but do you have any plans to come to Armenia anytime soon? And is there any plans for a concert in Armenia? We originally had plans for a concert in Armenia last year as part of our European tour with System of a Down, but because everything got canceled, all those plans are basically up in the air uh, now. As far as me coming there, I'm stuck here with a lot of work that I, that I have to complete, but I do want to come down later this year for sure. Perfect. Well, Serge, I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on CivilNet.